Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze and Blaze Stewart Architect of Intellect. And today we're going to be taking a look at Azure App Migrations using infrastructure as a service and how to build an Azure Lending Zone with that. Hi guys, today I'm going to take a look at the print app that we were going to be migrating into Azure. This little print app was designed to demonstrate different kinds of migrations that you might do into Azure for an application. So the application itself we looked at last week and some possible paths forward. This particular one is going to be looking at infrastructure as a service as that might be a viable option for some workloads that you might want to put on Azure. But as part of this migration, what we wanted to do is establish an Azure landing zone. So the Azure landing zone is kind of the core pieces of Azure that you need to get in place before you do any migrations. And once you have those in place, then you can go move your app into Azure. So the first thing I wanna look at today is what is an Azure landing zone? And then I'm gonna talk about the Azure landing zone for the application itself that we have in question here. And then we're gonna go over to Azure and take a look at that and how it's manifested for infrastructure as a service. So this is a little print app that I was talking about where we had a client that can see uh, photos over here on the left. And then there's a web server right here and it accesses data off of a file share that it's reading the images from. And then if a user in the client says, print this image, it goes to a print server and then sends that over to a, a photo printer right here to print the image. So it's a very basic application, does some basic stuff, but it has a lot of different components that you can use to demonstrate the kinds of things that you need to move to Azure and what you can't move to Azure. Obviously I can't move a printer to Azure. However, I can move other things about this application into Azure, such as storage. I can move the application hosting it Itself. The client's going to be running on a browser, so that's not really something I have to move into Azure. But basically, this piece right here is what I'm going to be orienting for Azure. So on Azure, it's probably going to look like this for my first scenario, which is the one I'm talking about today, lift and shift. And I basically outlined it looking like this last week. But ultimately, what I ended up with it was an a architecture that looks like this. So this is a little bit more detailed than what we talked about uh, last week. So you can see the basic components of what I had on this right here, but this is actually looking at the actual Azure components that I stood up to make this work. So on premise, this has stayed the same. I still have the photo printer over here in the print server. I still have my firewall. So that's that, those are the pieces that I, I have on premise. Now on Azure, what I needed to do to make this solution architecture work is I needed to send, stand up some Azure networking. So for that, I created what we call a hub and spoke topology. So I have a hub VNet and an app VNet. And this is my hub VNet that any apps I might put on Azure would be stemmed off of using various spokes. And you use VNet peering between the app VNets, your spokes, to the hub. And the hub will contain shared resources that applications might use, such as a VPN connected to on-premise. In this case, what I did is I stood up that hub VNet, I set up an Azure uh, virtual network gateway, and then I established a VPN connection back to my uh, on-premise firewall. And once I got that all set up, I can then route traffic between on-premise and Azure as if they were part of the same local area network. So that's pretty straightforward there. So what I did over here on the right now is set up a lot of infrastructure related to running the application and exposing that application. So this application is sitting on a separate VNet with peering back to this uh, hub VNet. I don't have any other infrastructure in here because this app doesn't have anything like domain controllers or anything like that. So it just simply needs a VPN for this purpose. And I have some app VMs right here for the solution. And for storage, I went with Azure Files. And rather than expose Azure Files directly to the internet and connect that way, I used a private endpoint. So that shows up as essentially a private IP address on this app VNet. Additionally, I exposed this through an application gateway. And then that application gateway serves as a, a firewall as well as a load balancer in front of a couple of, of VMs that are running the application. So this uh, setup is a fairly common uh, way to get applications up and running on Azure. So as part of the landing zone for this application, what I need then is for the solution architecture, I need this hub VNet set up and I need the uh, VPN gateway set up. Uh, and then I need to get the app VNet set up. 
so that I can ultimately move the application there. So my, my landing zone is pretty straightforward in this particular scenario. It's basically the VPN, the hub VNet, and then an app VNet for the peering, as well as some of the security controls that go in around that, which I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about through this particular migration project here for this particular application, because in my scenario, it's pretty straightforward, but I do wanna talk about those in brief because of the kinds of things that you might wanna think about for data security, as well as uh, other things around controlling the Azure environment. Now, this particular application itself has built in access control. So all of the authentication for the application is built right in the application. It's not using any third party identity. So for that third party identity store, I didn't have to do any kind of syncing between Azure and my on-premise uh, identity stores like Azure AD. And so I just basically lift and shift that into Azure. I still need Azure identity for managing my RBAC controls on Azure. So for this particular one, given that this is a small application and I'm basically the only one using it, uh, it would be me having access controls in this environment. But what I did to separate my concerns here then is I put these different uh, assets in different resource groups. And for this being a small application, I could probably get away with that. In a more production-oriented environment, what I'd probably want to do is have a separate subscription for my hub resources from my application resources. And then if I had dev test and QA and so on, I would want separate subscriptions for my dev, my uh, for my test, for my production environments. And then I could uh, fine-tune the RBAC for those particular subscriptions. You can do it at the resource group level too, but it does make managing the costs and other things related to that a little bit harder to do. So I recommend using subscriptions in that case uh, to separate the applications from the hub uh, resources, those shared resources, and also between the different environments. However, the test and QA environment still can share the hub VNet with the app, the production. You just have to make sure that you're not going to bring that down. In some cases, it might be wise to set up a separate on-premise connectivity for non-production workloads so that you can ensure that those don't interfere with production whenever you might be doing tests and so on. But for this particular application, I just basically use resource groups to manage the resources, divide them up, and that way I have separations of concerns between what I have on my application and what I have for my shared resources, which in this case is my basically my VPN. So let's go over to Azure and take a look at what this looks like on Azure and look at the resources and then we'll bring the app up on Azure and uh, then just interact with it a little bit so we can see it in action. So for this particular application, these are the two resource groups that I created for migrating this app into Azure. So Lift and Shift is my hub VNet and this is where I set up the VPN for this particular application. So it's just basically got a virtual network gateway, a local gateway connection, which represents my on-premise network. And then with that, I then set up the virtual network gateway to connect to my firewall here. And then I used the virtual network gateway on the virtual network that I have right here. And this guy is then peered back over to this VNet inside of my other resource group right here. Now, this resource group contains the resources for all of my applications that are needed for this particular demo. In this case, it's a single application running on a virtual machine. So I basically configured this to use a virtual machine and then a virtual network that is peered back to the hub. And then I have it publicly exposed through a public IP address that I have named this right here, uh, Blaze Image Printer, NorthCentralCloudApp.com. So if I uh, open up a new tab, I should be able to run this application. There it is. And what this is going to allow me to do then is log into this application and um, it should pull up the images like we saw in the on-premise demo. Now, this is reading these off of a file uh, storage account that is on the that is connected to the virtual machine that the application has access to. So if I hit show, it's going to show the image and then I can zoom in and so on on the image just by looking at it that way. Now, if I was to hit print for this, it would actually send the image over to the image printer that I have, but I'm not gonna do that because then I'm gonna be wasting ink, but that does work. But to show you that the VPN is there, that it is functional, 
I could uh, um, also pull this up just using the private IP address. So if I do HTTP colon slash slash to not 3.0.4, I should get the same app. So I'm, I'm, this is the exact same app now running on the, that's the private IP address. Uh, this is the same app that is running um, over the internet. When I go this route right here, this is just running a local copy of it uh, using my VPN to connect to it. So I have my desktop right here connected to my firewall, which then routes over the VPN into Azure, which then connects by way of a BNet peering back to that virtual machine. And it's just running HTTPS. And so you can get the same result going privately or publicly to the endpoint. So that is basically how this works. So the ability to move this into Azure based on a lift and shift approach is really one of those things that you can do for moving a lot of things into Azure. It's gonna be very little changes in relationship to what we did talk about right here with our app VM. Um, I don't have to do much in terms of code changes at all. In fact, for this application, I, I made it a point not to change the code just so I can make it work. And I did every effort I could to ensure that the application would run uh, without changing one line of code in the app. And that's what I did here. And this particular one I, I is going to be very expensive. And I did want to talk about some of the, the pros and cons here um, as well, but using this particular slide to talk about the cons, particularly around costs for this, because this is a very expensive application to run in this setup. Again, this is a trivial app, so it's kind of very expensive way to run a very trivial, trivial app. There are much cheaper ways to do it on Azure. But for this particular app, the, the biggest cost is obviously going to be probably the compute for it. Um, running a, a HA setup on Azure to get, you know, say three nines or, uh, or better is going to require multiple VMs running the application and using uh, something to load balance those. In this case, an application gateway. The reason I went with an application gateway versus a standard load balancer is this gives me some better security endpoints right here. It's got a built-in WAF. So in that case, I would want to ensure that I have that application gateway in front of applications that are running web apps on VMs in that case. So that gives me the ability to have much more secure uh, exposure in that, in that regard. Over here, I have uh, Azure Files, which is not the, the cheapest storage option on Azure. Uh, it's usually more more expensive than something like Blob Storage, but it does give you that SMB endpoint that I can mount into a VM, which then allows my application to inter natively interact with that Azure File Share as if it were uh, a file share on some kind of server. But I don't have to change the application to use SDKs to take advantage of that. It's just part of the file system in that case. Now, the other thing that could cost a little bit is a VPN. Now, in my case, I'm running basic on the virtual network gateway, which isn't too expensive. It's limited, I think, about 100 megabits per second. But you do pay some additional uh, cost for that uh, VPN traffic. And you also pay for the VPN uh, bandwidth and so on coming into Azure. Now, if you were to uh, go up to a more what am I might call production oriented VPN, you would probably get up to uh, one of the uh, the premium tiers or go with something like an express route. And then you would probably also have redundancy built in. And so rather than a single VPN, like I did for this, uh, for cost reasons, I only did a single one. You would want to have a secondary VPN for failover to ensure that the a VPN, should it go out, still has the ability to connect back to uh, your network so that you don't have a single point of failure. So if you're going to build HA, you need to ensure that the entire setup is HA'd. And the one uh, single point of failure that I could also have is I don't have HA printers. I only have a single photo printer in the back end. Uh, so if I wanted to make sure that this was truly HA, I would need to have redundancy as, the, as, as there on premise. I didn't do that for this reason, but uh, I could definitely do uh, HA for VMs. And um, this is HA out of the box and an application gateway is as well. I would need a redundancy in that case as for the VPN and some of that on-premise uh, hardware that I'm running. So this is one solution. We're gonna look at the containerized version of this uh, just so you can get an idea of this. I really don't like the container solution uh, for a lot of reasons, but that's what we're gonna look at next time we get together and talk about migrating to Azure. We're gonna uh, look at what you have to do to make containers work and some of the um, refactoring effort that I had to do for that particular build 
as well as uh, recycle probably some of these this infrastructure uh, for that particular case because it's going to look a lot like this in order to make sure that I have connection on premise as well as the ability to um, connect to uh, storage and other things like that over private uh, connections as well. So look forward to that video and hopefully we'll have that up for you in uh, a week or so once we get this one published. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you. Thank you.